going to happen. But we must do this. You'll be left with a limp. And we cannot have the future Lord of Winnemere Hall limping now, can we, Master Basil? Hold those in place right there. My name is John Mannion, sir. I am grateful to you, Mr. Mannion. John. And I am Basil to you. How did you know who I am? I'm staying in the village close by. I'm here on holiday. Some of the villagers pointed you out to me when you drove by in your carriage. You are not from these parts, then? No, sir. I am from London. I manage accounts for a small linen merchant. Not quite the social circle you must be used to. I do not have a social circle. I lead a very private life, really, and have no friends. Is that so? That's a pity, sir. Basil, every man needs a mate. Go ahead, share a smoke. <coughs> right, I must leave you here and fetch help. Stay where you are. I'll come back for you. I promise. I would. I'm a man of my word. I fetched the boat. Hang on tight. Take a deep breath. And with the tide rising, you would surely have drowned, Basil. I thank you, sir. It was a very brave thing you did. It was only human, sir. No more than you would have done for me, I'm sure. Can we uh, offer you a room for the night? Well, thank you, sir, but I have a room at the village inn. Shall I order a carriage to take you back, then? Thank you again, sir, but I enjoy walking. Good night. Watch out for yourself, Basil. place. He did a good deed, but refused to take advantage of it. Quite frankly, I find it odd that a man would do a good deed for nothing. What kind of a man is that, I wonder? A gentleman, sir. He could have stayed in his place and watched me drown in mine. Shall I ring the bell for supper now, Uncle Frederick? Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I came looking for you. How's your leg? It's getting better every day. Oh, good. Would you do me the honor of joining me for lunch, Basil? Yes, thank you. So, what did your father say when you said you were coming to see me? I, I did not tell him. He does not want us to have friends. Us? Oh, Clara and I. Oh, yes, Clara. What is it with the women of your class, Basil? Why do they like that pale, sickly look so much? Perhaps it is to keep their menfolk virtuous. Maybe their pale, sickly look is why the men of your class aren't so virtuous. One to wed, another to bed. Isn't that your tradition? Forgive me, Basil. That was a joke, a bad one. Surely you don't mean to tell me you're that inexperienced. 
Your mates in college would have told you about such things. Oh, I forget your father did not let you have mates. You're my mate. You tell me. There's nothing more to tell, Basil. That's all there is to it. Once you've done it a couple of times, you wonder what the fuss was all about. Done it? Have you, John? When? And with whom? Oh, dear. You're not going to pounce on poor Clara in your haste to make good on your lost prime, will you, Basil? I think she would die of fright. You cannot say until you've tried, my friend. But if it does not work, come and see me in London, and I will see what I can do for you. I leave tonight. I hope you'll visit me in London. I usually dine with my employer, so come and have supper with me at 16 Whitehorse Square. <laughs> Bounder. Come on. Come on, Bounder. 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 Clara, I am sorry. Don't cry. It felt just like Bounder. I'm sorry, Basil. If you do it again, I promise I'll not laugh. You are a silly, inexperienced girl, Clara. It is clear you have never been kissed by a man before, nor are you likely to be in the future. How do you feel, Basil? Not too good, I'm afraid. You don't seem to have a fever. Pity you can't come with us to the opera today. Come, Clara. Goodbye, Basil. John!